Welcome. In the last video, we saw basically how to use push constants to get data dynamically into the shader. Um, as you can see here, this lets us uh, pass in a model matrix and draw a um, object at a bunch of different positions and rotations. Today, the extra level of complexity we're going to add is drawing multiple types of objects, multiple meshes. Um, specifically, we're going to keep these two models where they are, and we're going to put a ground object beneath them. Let's jump in. In this project, the environment, as you remember, is decoupled from the renderer. The environment data exists, the renderer exists, and it takes that environment data and draws the environment, which means there's a pre-existing understanding of the individual components which go into the environment. Um, to this end, let's keep track of individual meshes, kind of like paints on a palette. So starting with the engine header, all we really need to do right now is um, just declare a mesh for the statue and the ground. Okay, and it will be the job of the loading function to populate those. Now let's go to the ground object. So remember before we had a general, uh, where is this, statue object, which tracked a position and um, some rotation. We can pretty much copy paste this code um, to make our ground object. Only difference is, I guess, we're not going to rotate the ground. We could if we want. That's not an issue. Um, we just won't. And as we can see here, um, for the source, it's very straightforward. We take that position and we set our position to it. Okay. Um, the next step is to declare this in the scene. So we go to the scene and we need to include the ground. Uh, class, and we'll make a vector of ground objects just to keep track of all the pieces. Um, then when we go to the source file for this, it's as simple as creating a ground object at the origin, I guess. The most important thing is we have a height of zero so that we are at the statue's feet. Okay, now for the big one. So, the um, drawing work is surprisingly simple. Let's have a look at it. Draw frame. So remember the way we did it before is we, first of all, bind the statue mesh, and then we loop through all the statue objects declared by the scene and draw them at each of their positions. Okay, no problem. Uh, why well, this should be bind the ground mesh. Okay, now for each binding, we've got an offset of zero. So I've just, I probably didn't have to redeclare this, but this is just to keep it robust. So we declare, um, we bind the ground vertex buffer and index buffer. Okay, and then Similarly, we loop through all the ground objects declared by the scene and we get their position. And it turns out we do need to rotate it, but that's just because of the way the um, mesh was initially created. Um, it just needs to be spun around a little bit. It's at the wrong orientation. Um, and then we just draw it. And that's it. So I'll just run this right now. And as you can see, we have our two um, statues and we have the ground beneath them. And we could create all sorts of um, models and load them in and stuff. Now, if we try to do this straight away, we will get an error. And the error is due to the fact that the functions um, create vertex buffer and create index buffer were originally written just to create the buffers for the single 
um, statue object. So let's have a look at how this works now. Go ahead and close this and go back up. Okay, so initialize Vulkan um, instead of calling load models and then load vertex, load index, we'll just call load models. Now the way load models works is we have the statue model and the ground model. We load them in from the file and then we call create vertex buffer and index buffer and we pass in the um, mesh that we want to create that for. We also need to declare the um, deletion function. So really all that we've done here when we go down to vertex and index is we take in a mesh and remember, this is a reference and it's the same code as before, except everywhere originally I had written statue. Now we'll just apply it to the general mesh object. So we just do a like a find replace. Everywhere we see statue, we change that to our general mesh because now we've got heaps of different objects. And yeah, let me just... I'm curious. And when I do something I haven't practiced, there's a good chance it'll crash. Nope, it works. Okay. Ah, oh, we get a little bit more performance. Okay. So that's it. We can now draw different sets of objects with their own transformations. Um, the next step from here is to pass in different textures from each object. Now I'm looking into that at the moment from what I'm reading, the understanding is it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, but anyway, we will look at that next time. Have fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.